When you hear the word Dubai, the first images that come to mind are the infinite skyscrapers, the luxury cars, the dream villas, the gigantic shopping malls where shopping lovers find their happiness, the paradisical beaches, and finally, the splendid artificial islands that adorn its coasts. Let's talk about these islands. Do you have any idea how they were built? Where did the idea for this pharaonic project come from? Who was at its head? Fasten your seatbelts. Today, we take you on a little tour of the land of Arab princes, idyllic oriental landscapes, where luxury flows from the source. In order to learn more about these artificial islands, which are noticed thousands of meters from the skies. As you know, the word impossible does not appear in Dubai's vocabulary, and nothing could accurately illustrate their ambitious engineering feats, which always push the limits of the impossible a little further. Among Dubai's wildest projects are its artificial islands. These are undoubtedly a highlight in the Emirates' growing real estate market and tourism industry. It is also the project that best characterizes the progress and exceptional beauty of the city. You must have seen them at least on television, these islands in the form of gigantic palm trees, or in this artificial archipelago representing the map of the world, rest on the coast of Dubai. A very commendable feat that propels Dubai to the top of the most innovative cities in the world in terms of architecture. Don't be fooled by the size of this very ambitious project. It only took one small idea to come up with it, creating an island out of nothing. Like all other emirates in the country, Dubai is also looking to diversify its sources of income and compensate for the depletion of its oil reserves that are beginning to dry up. Therefore, in addition to focusing on metal and non-metallic material processing industries, new technologies, and the creation of the Dubai Silicon Oasis, the Emirate has chosen to make trade and tourism its other main focus. And as you probably know, Dubai, with its 3,885 square kilometers, has only a very small coastline. So to complete the audacious hotel projects that have proliferated in the city in recent years, Dubai has had the intention of increasing the surface of its coastline by building artificial islands. Thus, the two Palm Islands, Palm Jumeirah and Palm Jebel Ali, will be born, increasing the length of Dubai's coastline by several kilometers. In the meantime, the work of the Palm Deira has begun and the archipelago of the world has also seen the light. Palm Jumeirah and Palm Jebel Ali are designed in the shape of a trunk and 17 palms, surrounded by a pier. Each of these palm islands was about 60 kilometers of beach and therefore required the movement of colossal quantities of cubic meters of sand and rocks. We are talking about hundreds of millions. Palm Jebel Ali is mainly intended for entertainment and attractions for children and adults. It will host marinas, water parks, residences, several dozen hotels, including one of the most luxurious hotels in the region, Atlantis the Palm, but also restaurants, shopping centers, sports fields, philosotherapy centers, cinemas, etc. The trunk is mainly made up of communication routes and canals. A 300-meter bridge should connect the trunk to the mainland. Jebel Ali, which should have been finished in 2008, is currently on standby. It was planned to be 50 times larger than the island of Palm Jumeirah once finished. The latter has gained international recognition as a dream residential destination, so sought after by the wealthy class. As for Palm Deira, it is the largest of the three archipelagos, consisting of 41 palms, 14 kilometers in length. 8.5 kilometers in width, and 80 square kilometers in area. It is planned to be larger than Manhattan and cover an area larger than the French capital. However, it will be exclusively reserved for 8,000 luxury villas, marinas, shops, and sports complexes, but will not include any hotels. The developer, Nakheel Properties, had initially planned to have three palm-shaped islands, but retracted and revised its original plan to create four smaller artificial islands. The Deira Islands are expected to feature a night souk, one of the world's largest night markets, small shopping paradises, including the creation of the Deira Mall with a retractable roof atrium, 1,000 stores, and will serve as a centerpiece for the Deira Islands Boulevard. Deira Island would have housed about 1 million people if the project had been completed. Finally, a few kilometers away is The World, located exactly 4 kilometers from the coast, between Palm Jumeirah and Palm Deira. 
It is a collection of 250 to 300 small artificial islands, arranged in such a way that they represent the continents and the main islands of the Earth. The price of each island ranges from 10 to 45 million dollars. When completed, the world will be 9 kilometers long and 7 wide. It is planned to include numerous hotels, resorts, and tourist complexes, as well as private villas at astronomical prices for the most affluent clients. It is also planned that each island will be occupied by a hotel, a housing estate, or a house, and that a large number of investors will develop their island according to the country of which the island is shaped or according to its position on this giant planetsphere. For Dubai, these unique achievements make it an exceptional place for global tourism, with international attendance served by the largest airlines, including Emirates. Today, Dubai welcomes millions of tourists and even manages to compete with famous paradise destinations like the Maldives. The Dubai airport has seen its traffic explode since 2003, and Emirates offers express trips with a two-day program in Dubai for shopping only, especially during the shopping festival, an event so much awaited by Dubai's inhabitants and which lasts a whole month. All these hotels, shopping malls, villas, all this luxury is very well, but how could it all be created from scratch? To understand, we'll have to dive into the depths of the ocean to discover the least glamorous part of this project. Dubai's artificial islands are built through a seemingly simple process called land reclamation. This involves manually raising the height of the seabed. Millions of tons of sand, about 150 million, were dredged from the bottom of the Persian Gulf that borders Dubai and deposited in the appropriate places to be finally pulverized into the sea and to give shape to the islands. These islands are mainly made of sand. Only some riprap was made on the outside of the crescent-shaped dikes which were created to counteract the swell of the sea that can sometimes cause damage. If you are wondering who protects all these islands, the answer is simple. The inner islands are protected by an 11-kilometer long breakwater. It is there to fight against the seasonal northwest winds, which blow across the Gulf from Iraq, as well as the strong sea currents. And if you're wondering what keeps the sand that has been moved and pulverized from being washed away, it's a geotextile membrane that prevents erosion and it's in the lowest layer of the breakwater. The latter is topped by a layer of rocks weighing nearly one ton, which are covered by two layers of huge rocks weighing up to six tons each from the nearby Hajar Mountains. Just the amount of rock and sand that was used in the construction of Palm Jumeirah could form a wall two meters wide that would go three times around the globe. In addition, a 100 meter wide opening was added on each side of the huge crescent to allow water to circulate and avoid stagnation. And, to combine pleasure and safety, a six-meter-wide walkway runs the length of the crescent, an ideal place to enjoy a romantic stroll at sunset. If you are worried about the solidity of the buildings, rest assured that the foundations are deeply dug and anchored in extremely solid ground, where the sand has been piled up to be as compact as the earth in order to resist potential earthquakes. The construction of the islands was a real challenge because in addition to being infallible, they had to be made in a very great meticulousness, first of all, for a preoccupation of aesthetics. Indeed, to meet the requirement of creating the perfect shape, the dredgers used highly developed GPS. Thus, they were able to pulverize the sand in place with flawless precision. All in all, it was necessary for these titanic projects to take into account the currents, the bad weather, to mobilize nine barges, 15 tugs, four dredges, 30 land machines, and 10 floating cranes to collect, move, and order the various materials necessary for the construction of the dike, without forgetting the thousands of workers and engineers who put their hands to work. It is also important to mention that the materials used for these projects are mostly natural in order to blend in with the landscape, the fauna, and the flora, and not to cause them any harm. In addition to the artificial islands of the Palm Island, a temporary dam was built, a long six-lane sea tunnel which was built using 200,000 cubic meters of reinforced concrete, 30,000 tons of reinforcing steel, and 110,000 tons of rock was created because of the need to connect the trunk to the crescent, 25 meters below sea level. The construction of the tunnel was done in dry conditions. Two dikes of 1.2 kilometers long were also built to make the dam. 5.5 million cubic meters of seawater had to be pumped out in only 45 days, 
with about 2,000 fish captured and moved to prevent them from being trapped in the drained space. The dikes were used as temporary roads for construction vehicles during this time. You are probably wondering how long the Palm Island project has taken to come to fruition. First of all, you should know that at this time, many important works have been suspended because of the financial crisis, the recent health crisis that hit the world, or because of major disagreements between the managers, investors, and builders. The Palm Island is therefore not totally finished, quite the contrary. But until now, the project of these artificial islands has required in addition to $12 billion, six years of work. If the majority of the works and construction projects were suddenly stopped, some remained only on paper. Projects sometimes extravagant that were mainly intended for the island of Palm Jumeirah. We are talking about the Trump Tower, for example, which was originally intended to be the luxury centerpiece of the trunk. The tower was to have 60 mixed-use floors with 300 five-star hotel rooms and 360 residential apartments with private access to the beach and yacht club. It was to contain tennis courts, a gymnasium, fitness center, swimming pools, and gardens, among other things. But the project was subtly shelved following the global financial crisis. Instead, Nakheel opened in November 2012 Al-Itihad Park. That's nice too. Tiare Unis, another project under construction, was to take the form of two towers located near Dubai's financial district. A sort of replay of the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York. We can also mention the Arabian Blade Tower, a green tower containing residences, a hotel, and a shopping mall. Or the Nakheel Tower, a one-kilometer-high tower that was to have 200 floors, all divided into offices, stores, apartments, and a luxury hotel at its top. It was supposed to be the tallest tower in the world, but the project was aborted because of money worries. And finally, the Jumeirah Gardens, a huge real estate project that was supposed to cost $95 billion. Several different buildings were to be built around a large lake. Projects as idyllic as the others, which testify of the very wide imagination of the architects of the whole world, but which did not have for the moment the chance to be concretized. It is true that with all these figures and all these incredible photos, you get dizzy, and still, they are only photos. You haven't had the opportunity to see them with your own eyes yet. By the way, didn't this video make you want to go there and discover the artificial islands of Dubai with your own eyes? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and click here to watch another of our videos.